Here they go again. RAF tornadoes will be attacking targets in Iraq soon. 11 years after the Bush Blair invasion, 24 years after the Gulf War. But will this be the start of British involvement in a third Iraq war or simply small-scale, largely symbolic military action? The eyes to the right, 524. The nose to the left, 43. Today's vote was only so overwhelming because it allowed MPs with conflicting views about the future to back the same motion. It masked deep anxiety about what might follow next. Anxiety that showed on the face of the Prime Minister today and in hands that could be seen shaking as he stood up to tell MPs that military action was not just moral and legal but his and their duty. Left unchecked, we will face a terrorist caliphate on the shores of the Mediterranean and bordering a NATO member with a declared and proven determination to attack our country and our people. This is not the stuff of fantasy, it is happening in front of us and we need to face up to it. The RAF, he said, should now join the air forces of America, Europe and the Gulf states. And protecting the streets of Britain should not be a task that we are prepared to entirely subcontract to other air forces of other countries. Today's motion limits military action to Iraq and excludes ground operations. But minutes into the Prime Minister's speech, Dennis Skinner asked a question on many minds. How long will this war last and when will mission creep start? That from the Labour left, this from the Tory right. Is it seriously contended that by airstrikes alone we can actually roll back ISIL or is this gesture politics? The Commons is haunted by another vote at another time about military action in the same place. Many now say they regret the vote back in 2003, but still back action now, including the Liberal Democrats and the Labour leader, who said the case today was very different. One of those is the Labour leader, who said the case now was very different. This case is about supporting a democratic state. It is not about overturning an existing regime and seeking to build a new one. And he said Britain should not leave it to others to act. If we say to people that we will pass by on this one, it surely makes it far harder to persuade other Arab countries to play their part. One shadow minister quit and the aid to another was sacked after refusing to back their leader. This recent video, released by those fighting for what they call Islamic State, is in the Syrian city of Kobani, not in Iraq. So why, many MPs demanded to know, was Britain talking of action in Iraq alone? The elephant in the room for me remains Syria. ISIL will never be defeated if it is constantly allowed to regroup from its Syrian bases. The Prime Minister agreed on the need for military strikes against IS in Syria too, but promised another Commons vote first. And we support the action that the United States and five Arab states have taken in Syria, and I do believe there's a strong case for us to do more in Syria, but I did not want to bring a motion to the House today which there wasn't consensus for. That's code for saying he couldn't be sure that Labour or many of his own backbenchers would back him in the face of warnings like this. ISIL is a death cult. It's a gang of terrorist murderers. It's not an army. And it's certainly not an army that's going to be destroyed by aerial bombardment. Even some who voted for airstrikes today said the past showed the risks ahead. What, what happened was in all those cases that the military deployment produced a situation at least as bad as it had been before, and actually largely worse. British Muslim leaders have already united to condemn IS, but should that extend to backing military action against them? What they're doing is it's, it's not good, so we want people to be involved as well, So which is Britain potentially should be involved. We should have to negotiate with them, sit down and negotiate, because you will create thousands of ISIS. In a parallel debate in the Lords, Baroness Udin warned of the risks of alienating swathes of the Muslim community. The drumbeat of war, my Lords, has been far too quickly accelerated over the last two weeks without thorough references to the aftermaths. But the Church of England and the government were today singing from the same hymn sheet. The action proposed today is right, but we must not rely on a short-term solution, on a narrow front, to a global 
ideological, religious, holistic and transgenerational challenge. For the third time in a quarter of a century, MPs have voted to deploy our armed forces in Iraq. That's how it begins. No one knows how or when it will end. Nick Robinson, BBC News, Westminster.